Grote and Decay. Um, we're going to do this in two parts, really. The first bit is going to be compound interest. So that's the growth part. Um, interest, probably worth having a little just conversation about that. Interest is um, generally what we're talking about in maths, is stuff that you would get, say, on your bank account. Um, you would have, uh, you put money in your bank account, and then because you're essentially lending the money to the bank, um, you they give you a little bit of money back and each year that might be a small percentage of whatever money you've got. So it might be they give you 2% and so the interest you get is 2% of whatever is in your account. If you've got lots in your account, you get lots of interest. If you haven't got much in your account, you don't get much interest. That's how it goes. But the starter, first of all, I want you to practice changing percentages to decimals because uh, it's going to be a really useful skill today. And remember, percentage is out of 100, percent, percent, um, means out of 100. And the decimal then, if we're changing from percentage to decimal, I would divide by 100. In fact, if I was coming back the other way from a decimal and changing it into a percentage, I would be uh, doing the opposite. I'd be timesing it by 100 instead. Okay, um, now, for example, if I wanted to change 65% to a decimal, uh, I would divide it by 100. So I make it two places smaller. Shouldn't really need a calculator for that, hopefully. And so it would be 0 0.65. That's exactly what I want you to do, that kind of thing. And I want you to do it with these percentages down here. I want you to write it down on a bit of paper. Shouldn't take you too long, hopefully. There's our starter. I want you to pause the video and unpause when you're done. So hopefully you have changed these to decimals and you do that as we said by dividing by a hundred you're going to make it two places smaller same numbers just two places smaller so that decimal point has got to move or as we know really the decimal point doesn't move the numbers move so this would be 0 0.15 is the same as 15 percent 0 0.22 is the same as 22 percent 0 0.8 or 0 0.80, I'm not going to mark you down if you put the extra zero, you just don't need it. Or 0 0.04, now you definitely need all the zeros in that one. Oh, 12.5, tricky, people quite often get this wrong. 0 0.125, notice all the same numbers are in the same order and they've, they're next to each other, but it's just 0 0.125 now. 240%, two places smaller. Now, if you imagine where the decimal point is, if we were shifting that, which of course we don't really, um, it would end up just after the two. So it's actually 2.4 or 2.40. I, again, won't mark you down if you've put zero on the end, you just don't need it. And 0 0.7, well, two places smaller for that would be 0 0.007. All of those are decimal versions of the percentage. They're equal, they're the same amount, just written as a decimal. Right, that is going to be very useful. And so I've put it in the top right there, just so we remember what's going on. Right, using a multiplier to calculate a percentage. Now, of course, we could calculate percentages by breaking it down to blocks. We've done that before, haven't we? So here, if I wanted 14%, I could find 10% first of all, which would be 24.5. Then maybe I could find 1% times that by four, add it on. It's, it's all quite a, a faff. It takes a while, doesn't it? But we're going to be using calculators today. And the way to do this is to actually change the percentage to a decimal. Okay, now I'll show you what I mean. So we change the 14% to a decimal. Remember, we divide by 100. So it becomes 0.14. Now, if I times something by 0.14, I actually find 14%. Remember, in maths, times is basically of. So if I did 14% of 245, I do 14% times by 245. Here in this case, 0.14. Okay, 0.14 times by 245 equals 34. Point three, So that is 34.3, and because it's money, I need two decimal places for the pence. That's what I want you to do, okay? So I want you to change them into um, percentages, no, percentages, sorry, into decimals, and then multiply it across. So here's another example, 38% of this. Well, the first thing to do is change it into a decimal, change the percentage, so it's 0.38 and then times it by your amount, 
and that will find what you want. Okay, so 0 0.38 times by 3,100 is 1,178 grams. Isn't this so much easier than finding 10% and 5% and so on? Right, 9% of this amount, well, we divide it by 100, and that is 0 0.09. And we times that by the 540, which is 48.6, 48.6. And there's no units on here, so it's just 48.6. One more. OK, what about this 0 0.6? Now, remember, if we're dividing by 100, we're making it two places smaller. Now, because we are using a calculator, you could use one to find the, the multiplier, which is what this is. But hopefully, making it two places smaller, we shouldn't really need to do so. 0 0.006 times by 80 is 0.48. Now, the reason these are called multipliers is because we multiply by them. That is a multiplier. That is a multiplier. That is a multiplier. And that is a multiplier. Multiplier. Right? And they're particularly good for doing these sort of calculations, and they are absolutely essential for what we want to do later on. So get used to the skill. There are five questions for you to do. Uh, I want you to give the answers to two decimal places where necessary. I want you to pause the video, unpause when you've done your calculations please. Off you go. Okay we've unpaused. So what calculation would you need to do here? You'd need to do 0 0.11 times by 670. And I'm going to type that in my calculator, and it's 73.7. So we don't need two decimal places on that one. 26%, we would do 0 0.26 times by 580. And that gives you the answer of... 150.8, 65.3%, well that would be 0 0.653, we're going to times that by the 290, which gives you 189.37, uh, what about 4.8%, well that would be 0 0.048, times by 70 and that is 3.36 haven't needed to round at the moment have we which has been rather handy right 0 0.0035 would be that percentage and we're going to times it by 25 which is okay so 0. 0.0875, but it did say two decimal places, so 0, 0.0, and I'd round it up to a 9 because the 7 means I round up, and that's been rounded to 2dp. Okay, right, onwards. Hopefully, you got all of those right, or most of those right. If not, maybe go back and re watch the first bit of video. Right, so now we're going to increase pi a percentage. Now, this is where multipliers become particularly useful. So there's my example. I'm going to increase by 5%. Now that basically means I need to find 5% and add it on. So I could times it by, what, 0 0.05 and then add that onto my original amount, but I don't need to. I can do this. If we're increasing by 5%, that means that I will start with 100% of my amount. So that's all of my amount, 540. I'm going to increase it by 5%. So I'm going to add on that 5%. So I will have 105% by the time I'm done. Now, so in essence, all I actually need to do is find 105% of 540. So start with 100%. Always start with 100%. In this case, we're add increasing. So we add on the 5% to get 105 and then change that into a decimal. So 1.05. Now that there is a multiplier, and it's a multiplier for increasing by 5%, 1.05. doesn't matter what it is, if I times it by 1.05, I increase something by 5%. Let's go back to my blue pen. So 
So I want to increase 540, so I'm going to do 1.05 times by 540, and that will increase it. 1.05 times by 540 is 567. That's a very satisfying answer, isn't it? 567. Okay, not sure? Let's try another one. Right, increase this by 12%. Well, always start with 100% because that's just your original amount. All of it. All 3,100 of it. And then I'm going to increase. So I'm going to add my 12% to get 112%. Change that into a decimal. So just divide it by 100, which is 1.12. That's my multiplier. That's the important thing. So that's what I multiply by. And I want to increase 3,100. So I times it by 1.12, because that will increase anything by 12%. 3,472. 3,472. OK? And third example. Right, increase by 38%. Again, start with 100% and add on your percentage. So 138%, change that into a decimal, so it's a multiplier. So 1.38, and that's what I multiply by. That's my multiplier to increase anything by 38%. In this case, I want to increase 850 by 38%. So I type it into a calculator, and I get 1, 1, seven three and i've increased it by 38 percent okay right so let's practice some of those there are the questions for you to do five questions but i don't want you to actually increase something this time what i want you to do is write down the multiplier that would increase it because that's the skill i want you to do so what i mean by that is for example, at the top here, increase by 32%. What's my multiplier? Well, remember, start with 100%. Add on your percentage. So 132%. And then change it into a decimal by dividing by 100, just like we've done before. That is what I want you to do. Work out what the multiplier would be to increase by that amount. OK, so I'm going to pause the video. And I want you to write down the multipliers, please, for those. So pause the video, off you go. OK, we've unpaused. Here's the multipliers then. So if I start with 100% and I add on 26%, I have 126%. And when I divide that by 100, I get 1.2. Two, six. Okay, get the idea? So this one would be 1.08, 1 1.5 or 1.50, that would also be fine, or 1.025 and 150, right? Now this one I'm going to do with you because some people do get a little bit unstuck on this one, but just remember, go back to the 100%, add on the percentage you want, oops, which is 200, see I've got it wrong here, 250%, change it into a multiplier by dividing by 100, 2.5, or 2.50, I will accept either, okay? Well done if you got those correct. Right, what are we looking at next? Using a multiplier for compound interest. Now this is where, uh, this is what we're really aiming for today, and all the stuff will, you know, it's been working towards this grand moment. So a bank gives compound interest at a rate of 5% per year. Fat chance of ever finding that in a real bank, but never mind. If you invested £2,500, how much would you have after three years? Um, so what are we going to do? If I was going to answer this question, firstly, I need to know what compound interest is, right? So in the bank, you have a load of money. And as I said, you get interest on that. Now, most banks, obviously, when you get the interest, the next year, you've got more money. So when you then get 5%, you actually get 5% on your new amount. You get interest on your interest. And it just keeps building and building and building. OK? Um, now, we could, of course, find 5% of this and add it on. And then we could find 5% of our new amount and add it on. 
and then for the third year, five five percent five percent of that amount, and add that on. Okay, but that really takes ages, waste of time. We've got a little trick that we can use for this. And it goes a bit like this. Right, so if I'm increasing by 5%, I've suddenly gone all northern, which is a bit weird. Anyway, 500%, and I'm going to add on 5%. There we go. And I get 1 or 5%. Now, turn it into a multiplier. So divide by 100, and you've got 1.05. Okay, so if I take my amount, my 2,500, and I times it by 1.05, I will increase it by 5%, okay? And that will be my amount for the first year. Now, I want to do three years' worth of this. Now, if I times all of that again by 1.05, I will increase it by 5% again, all right? And it, so that's after the two years. Now, I want three years, so I'd have to do it three times to get three years worth of interest and each time it will find the interest on my interest. Now, this is a bit of a faff, right? We can do this much better than that. Because look, this number, 1.05, we times it by itself and by itself again. We've times the number by itself three times and we know how to write that neatly, don't we? Which is 1.05 to the power of three. Okay, and you type that into your calculator. It's like 2,500 times by 1.05 to the power of 3. And that will do the calculation in one easy go. Now, this is money, so we do need to round to two decimal places. But 2,894 pounds and 6 pence to two decimal places. Okay, isn't that so much easier? So here's the basic thing. You take your original amount, so in this case 2,500, you times it by your multiplier that you've worked out, which is why these things are so powerful, but you put it to the power of however many years you want to do it. Now really, when we say years, this question's using years, but really it's repetitions, right? It's the power of repetition. So if you were getting interest every month, you'd put however many months it is. But, you know, years is much easier to work with, which is why. I usually write years, just a way to remember it. But it's really repetitions, all right? Okay, let's have a look at this question and then. Ooh, ooh, go back, go back, computer. There we go. Right, a bank gives compound interest at a rate of 2% per year. You invest £6,000. How much do you have after five years? So first things first, let's work out the multiplier. So 100%. Add on your 2%, so you get... 102%. So after a year, I've got an extra 2%. Turn it into a multiplier by dividing by 100. So 1.02. That's the magic figure. And remember, up here, I've put the thing, original amount. How much have I originally got? £6,000, I wish. And times that by my multiplier, which is 1.02. And put it to the power of how many years it is, or how many repetitions. Well, it's five years, so it's five repetitions. So I'm doing it five times, and then type it in your calculator. How easy could that be? Much easier, it says. Right, and this is money again, isn't it? So I need to make sure that I've rounded it to the nearest pence. So 0.48 in this case. Okay, two questions for you to do, and then you can go off and you can do your My Maths worksheet. All right? Uh, what I want you to do, first of all, I want you to pause the video, do these two questions on a bit of paper, work out how much you get at the end of it, and then come back and I'll tell you what your answer is. Okay, so pause the video now. We have unpaused the video. Right, what's my original amount? It's £400. What's my multiplier? Well, it's 7%. So once I've increased it, I've got 107%. So the multiplier is 1.07. Hope you found that. How many repetitions? Well, it's five years, so the power of five. So 400 times by 1.07 to the power of, grey skull, no, power of five. Uh, if you don't know what that is, go look up an old cartoon called He-Man. 561.02. Okay, I hope you got that one right. Tick, smiley face. And this one, what have we got? 3,500 to a 2.5%. Right, so once you've increased it, you will have 102.5%. So as a multiplier, 
There's my original amount. As a multiplier, it will be 1.025. How many repetitions? Well, it's four years worth. So four repetitions, so power of four. Okay. Times by 1.023 to the power... Not three. That should be a five, shouldn't it? My own bad writing, I can't read. To the power of four is... And remember, it's money. So how many decimal places? That'll be two decimal places, sir. Well done, little Johnny. And to the nearest pence, it's three, five. Okay, right, hopefully you got those right. If not, maybe go back and watch the video again and just see what I'm doing in the earlier examples. Otherwise, what you need to do now is go off to my maths and go and do the compound interest worksheet that's there. Um, on these, where it says PA, that means per annum, which is good old fashioned Latin, which I know you don't learn at school anymore. What are they teaching you kids anyway? which means per year, all right? Per annum means per year. So 6% per year for five years, so five repetitions, all right? Be careful with this question here, because not only does it want to know the future value, basically how much you've got after five years, it wants to know how much interest you've got. So how much has it increased since your original amount of 10,000 pounds? Anyway, off you go, have fun, enjoy. Good luck.